Hi, I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about my fairly recent trip to Japan. I was fortunate enough to be able to go over to Tokyo um, and visit the quilt show over there in January, so that was kind of exciting for me. I did manage to go last year as well, so that was doubly exciting. So I thought I'd just share some of my photos that I took while I was in Tokyo and surrounds and also of the quilt show. Uh, so it's really a fairly casual look at my trip. I was there for about 12 days. I won't be standing here for 12 days, so it won't be everything that I did, but just a, a little bit of a run through of some of the things that I managed to do. So when I fly from here in New Zealand, by the time I arrive in Tokyo, it's pretty early in the morning, something like six o'clock in the morning, which means that I can get off the plane and go for a little wander. I can do all sorts of things. I have some friends in Tokyo who met me, so that's all really fun to do. So even just a wander through town. So I'm going to show you some photos of some of the things that I've seen. Then I'm going to show you some more photos of the quilt show and some of the other things that I managed to get up to while I was over there. So I've had this interest in J Japanese things for some time, particularly a certain type of thing. They're Japanese dolls. So I have a little collection of some of them here, but I'll talk more about them later. I am doing a block of the day this year, which is called the bento block of the day, which is the Japanese, um, they, as far as I understand it, they call their lunch boxes a bento box and it's got all these little compartments, so we've got our little compartments of things. So this is the start of our quilt, it's going for the whole year. Um, but I'm just about ready to launch into some photos, so I can talk to you about the photos. I can tell you that I went through uh, different parts of the city, there's like a kitchen type region in the city which has got all sorts of shops that sell things that you might use in the kitchen. There's one shop in particular that I came across that sells things only only chopsticks, all different chopsticks which I found very interesting. Uh, all different styles and colours and all those sorts of things. Um, also there was shops that sell, and don't be fooled by this, artificial food and very realistic some of it is to it. There's shops that sell all sorts of uh, the beautiful Japanese papers, their washi papers and other decorative papers that they make. So there's, there's just so much to see. I would be here forever if I showed you everything. Um, there's also, just walking through the town, they have these sort of uh, large canal type, I'm guessing they're probably possibly a stormwater drain, I don't actually know the answer to that. Um, but they're quite beautiful when you look at them. So sometimes the snacks, there's different foods in the shops, like the fruit and veggie type shops. There's, there's things like um, the lotus root, which I did eat some. I uh, don't know that I found that it had a huge amount of flavour, but I'm guessing it depends a little bit on how it's cooked. Um, there's all sorts of other different fruits. They have a wonderful citrus fruit over there called a yuzu fruit, which is kind of a combination between a grapefruit and an orange and a lemon lime, a mixture of all of them really. I personally really enjoy the flavour. So one of the places that my friend took me to while I was in Tokyo was a a place called Team Lab. So some of you may have heard of this. It's a digital light exhibition. It's kind of fun, it's exciting, it's colourful. It's largely dark because they're using a lighting as the exhibition. It's continually changing and moving. So we had a really good wander through there. You can see there's so much of it that I, of course, didn't photograph or couldn't photograph. But here's a little glimpse for you now so that you just see that things are just wonderfully displayed. People can be in them, out of them. You can even hide in there. And yes, I am in there somewhere. And also they have this wonderful tea room that we went to. And you can order a bowl of green tea and you can order a nice bowl of green tea ice cream to go with it. And they seat you so that you're all nicely separated around tables and things. And you have your own personal digital light show that happens on your own bowl of green tea. So waiting in line to go into the uh, quilt show is an experience in itself. We were there in good time, uh, which is just as well because you have to wait quite a lot of time. There's a lot of people wanting to go to the quilt show, like many thousands of people, all queuing, no matter whether it's cold, windy or raining or sunny. And yes, it pretty much does all of those things while you wait in line. So we were fortunate we were undercover because it did start raining. And to go in, there's just lots of people uh, waiting, as I said, to go in, all sorts of 
combinations, there's groups, there's people from overseas, there's a, a lot of local people of course wanting to see all the quilts. Um, so that was kind of fun to go in, um, security is always in place with all these things of, of course. And then when you go in, so the quilt show is held in the Tokyo Dome, which is a big sports, indoor sports arena. Um, so you go in at a sort of higher level so that you walk down, you can see the whole of the quilt show from above as you go down. And so generally speaking, this year the quilt show was the central part of that whole collection of stands and quilt stands and vendor stands. And then around the outside there's sort of three rings of of uh, vendors and selling all their wares which is always a really fun place to be at and to have a look through but uh, all sorts of things that we perhaps don't see as much of here um, lots of Japanese style things weirdly there was um, a lot of bags a lot of kits that you could buy a lot of patterns you can buy um, quite a lot of Japanese older fabrics uh, kimono type fabrics which is always nice to have a look through silks as well as cottons um, just pretty much anything that you might need for quilts. Um, not perhaps quite as many major fabric stands as that we see, but then some very recognisable ones. We see some of the normal fabric companies that we're used to um, with stands there as well. Just occasionally, because people have got some of the older wares, you might find something super exciting to somebody who particularly likes things like the Kokeshi dolls, which are the wooden dolls that I love so much from Japan. And I have to say that this particular lady is a quilt show lady. She's pre-loved, which is absolutely wonderful. And she has a little wobbly head, which is kind of interesting. And she has a little hair attachment here. But she was just waiting to come home with me from the quilt show. So that was kind of fun to be able to find something like that unexpectedly at a quilt show. Um, so I'm going to just run through some photos of quilts for you. They're in no particular order and I do apologise I did not get the makers names. All the tickets were written in, they were all there but I didn't understand any of them so it wasn't helping me at all understand which quilt went with what. So I do apologise for anyone whose quilt is there without your name on it. Your quilts were very much appreciated. So I'm just going to run through some of the quilts that I really thought were interesting. I've taken some close-ups of so you can see that some there's a larger quilt and then maybe a detail or possibly a couple of detailed ones, um, some that were appliqued, some that were pieced. There was really just a whole selection of quilts. Uh, probably nothing in particular that stands out because I just found the whole exhibition amazing. The attention to detail in their quilts is phenomenal. They, um, a lot of the quilts are made by hand. I'm guessing that uh, very many of the people who live over there don't necessarily have a sewing machine or perhaps don't have space for a sewing machine. Some of the homes seem to be fairly small in Japan from what I can gather. Uh, so handwork is what a lot of people are doing but they don't uh, leave anything out because of that. In fact they go to a whole lot more trouble I think. And I just love to see all the detail. There's a section where there's a lot of bags on, dis on display and they're beautifully made. There's a whole section on um, some quilts. Now some of the people that you perhaps will recognize the names of, there was a display in particular by um, a Japanese lady called Kiko Goki whose work I've admired for many years and she had a whole central display with an interesting big filled balloon type ball that she's obviously piece worked all the covering for and some smaller balls underneath. A whole lot of her quilts from over the years of her quilt life um, a whole lot of work also from Yoko Sato. There was quite a good display on, uh, I guess, sort of films and things like that, that sort of style of things. So there was like a Mary Poppins quilt and, and style and some of the uh, little houses that Yoko Sato make, makes so well. There was a whole village that she'd made um, and plus many more of her quilts. Um, and as I said, so many of the quilts. Now it kind of looks with some of these photos like I've had plenty of space to take them, but you need to understand that there was lots and lots of people at this show, so I just had to bide my time and wait till I caught a moment where there was nobody right in front of the quilt that I wanted to be at. Um, so I did manage to get some really nice clear shots, others not quite as clear of people, but that's fine because that's what the exhibition's all about. We're there, all of us, to enjoy the quilts. 
So beyond that, I don't really know what else I can say except to just let you admire some of these pictures. The vendors was very interesting as I've mentioned. Um, again, loads and loads of people so you had to be patient to be able to get close to things that you wanted to look at. Um, and the quilt show just went on and on. I managed to go over two days so that was really good. That meant I had a really good look at things. I could go back and have another look at some things that I didn't feel that I'd looked at closely enough. Quite a lot of small displays within the exhibition of perhaps a Christmassy area. There was a whole retro, like a set up a bit like a retro cafe with quilts and various other made items in it. Uh, really it just goes on and on so please do enjoy these photos and then we'll go on a little visit somewhere else very shortly. So following the quilt show, I decided that it was really time I went and did what I had been wanting to do for some time. I wanted to go out, out of town a bit uh, to where they make the Kokeshi dolls. The Kokeshi dolls are just, to me, very appealing. I just love everything about them. They're tactile, they're appealing visually. They're a wooden doll. They've been making them for over a couple of hundred years, I believe. They are made in a region called the Tohoku region, which is... Um, I guess it's sort of north of where Tokyo is, I'm not that great on the geography. Um, and they have all these different areas within the Tohoku region where they have what they call an onsen, which is like a hot pool that you can spend time in. And no, I did not do that on this trip. However, there's several of them around the area and I think this is where the Kokeshi dolls originated from as far as I'm understanding it. So people were making them to sell to the people that were visiting the hot pools. So as far as I could tell, I went to a couple of the museums and things and some information was, um, was there about that. But first of all, I had to get there. So I managed to go on the train. The trains are a great service in, um, in Japan. So I'm going on a bullet train. So these go super fast. I don't know how fast that is, but pretty fast. And and you, they have vending machines on the stations and places and all around town for that matter where you can buy, particularly in winter, you can buy hot and cold drinks from these little vending machines. So you can buy hot coffee that comes out of a vending machine in a container and you can buy wonderful little snacks that you recognise because they have their pictures on. Museum was very interesting to me. There are loads of different um, dolls in there, well hundreds, probably thousands of dolls in there. Um, so I've managed to take a few photos of some of these dolls. There's different styles that come from the original different artists and slightly different areas within that whole region. Then the next day I was hoping to go out to one more doll museum and, and I did that and I went out and it was uh, called the Yajiro Kokeshi Doll Museum, which was about 20 minutes away from where I was staying. Really enjoyed having looking around that one. That one had a whole lot of uh, little, like a little village of Kokeshi makers um, at that particular point in time when I was there, probably not doing anything at that stage because it was middle of winter and not too many tourists or people around to have a look at what they're doing. But it was very interesting to have a wander through the museum, have a wander around the little village. The scenery was lovely and I did manage to acquire, while I was there, a very beautiful Kokeshi doll that was made in, made there. And as I was buying her, the, the sales lady managed to indicate to me that she's made from um, the cherry blossom wood, the sakura wood, which was really interesting because I hadn't realised that they were making them from that wood. And so she is now called Cherry Blossom. So she has come home with me. Um, so it was just a really exciting time for me to go and visit those places. Um, I have had an interest in the Japanese dolls for some time, apart from the fact that I've got many on the quilt behind me and there's more of it here. There's also this quilt that I've got on the table that I made several years ago now, but it's depicting largely Kokeshi dolls. I've just loved those dolls for so long. 
Um, and so it was really interesting for me to go and see where they made, to see how they made, and just to learn a little bit more about their history. So, so I was able to get up on top of a high building, um, one of the accommodation buildings where I was staying, and there's a magnificent view across Tokyo um, from there. And so I was able to get some fabulous shots of Mount Fuji in the distance and also right across the city, and it just spreads for so far. It's an amazingly large city compared to anything I'm used to. Uh, so the view, as I said, was fantastic. Mount Fuji was amazing. So last year when I went over to Tokyo, I was able to get a whole lot closer to Mount Fuji and was able to take a couple of shots in the region there. So I just thought you might like to see those because that was just magnificent as it was then as well. And I'm sure it probably still is, but I didn't get out there this time. So I hope you've enjoyed coming to Japan with me on this tour. Thank you for being there. And um, I really hope you get the opportunity to go there yourself sometime if that's something you'd like to do. And thank you again for watching with me.